about the deadline. Uh, what what uh, David said about, um, about Eli is what um, all my editors have never said about me. <laughs> <laughs> be, be lucky with 2.45 a.m. <laughs> so uh, I'm here today with Dr. Linzer, the love of my life and my closest advisor, and our son Benji. And we, we plan to spend the morning at the Spy Museum. I'm not making this up. <laughs> and we decided that was imprudent. <laughs> But just, just about a year ago, I called Jeff Lean at home, pretty late at night, and I asked him to arrange a meeting with Marty Barron right away, someplace private. Um, sorry, I can't say why. <laughs> By the way, Marty want, might want to bring a lawyer. So there's quite a long pause. I assume Jeff was biting his tongue and uh, uh, deciding not to say the first three things he was thinking. Uh, but he's been around the block a few times, and eventually he said, okay. And a day and a half later, um, I was on the seventh floor with Marty and Kevin, Jeff and Cameron, and uh, about as many lawyers. And I had a, frankly, preposterous pitch. Uh, there's this secret source. I don't actually know his name. Uh, when I find out, I'm probably not going to tell you right away. Uh, I have a document that purports to be a top secret NSA uh, briefing with scary stamps on it that I've never seen before. Uh, authenticating that is going to be a real bitch. Uh, and there will be really hard decisions to make about what to publish and what not to publish. The legal risks are obvious. The Post will need all kinds of new security measures. And you don't know me from Adam Marty, but how'd you like that deal? <laughs> And I, I kind of held my breath. I'd been away for three years. Um, I honestly didn't know what he was going to say. But it turned out that Marty liked that deal fine. Uh, he knew what he was getting into. He spoke thoughtfully about the journalistic stakes and the questions we'd have to answer along the way. He brushed aside some meaningful glances from the lawyers that suggested they might like to see him privately for a minute. <laughs> and I thought to myself, damn, I do know this guy. This is still the Washington Post I grew up with. Uh, pretty soon I had a red contractor ID with my bar mitzvah picture on it, because apparently it was in the, uh, in the system still. Uh, Liz White was setting up a secure space and encrypted storage and email. Uh, Jeff took the helm of that first story. Marty began assembling the all-star team of reporters and editors and designers and web jockeys uh, that carried through carried all of us through some of the most exhilarating and frightening <laughs> year of reporting that I've ever known. So here's a true story. I'm not making this up. Uh, late in the fall, Daphna opened a fortune cookie one night. We were at a Chinese restaurant with Benji. It said, put the data you have uncovered to beneficial use. <laughs> I took a picture, it's true. Uh, she, she turned to me, uh, handed it to me, and said, I think I got your cookie. <laughs> so we decided that actually it belonged to Ed Snowden, um, who took the greatest risks to tell a story that the public needed to hear. Um, this is obviously and rightly the Washington Post's award. I'm especially proud of the category. Public service feels like a validation of our belief in the face of some pretty strong criticism that the people have a right to take part in drawing the boundaries of secret intelligence in a democracy. It's a validation even more of Snowden's own decision to make that possible. Anne has done uh, most of the, road, the uh, roll call, but I wanted to add a personal word or two. First, Laura Poitras, the filmmaker, introduced me to Ed Snowden and worked with me for months to check his story. Um, Julie Tate has been my research crutch and scold and partner since I was like 12 years old, uh, and she's amazing. Greg Miller, I, I watched him tear through a 300-page secret intelligence budget and write a 100-inch draft story in about a day. Uh, you really should have seen him in a room full of angry senior intelligence officials from 15 agencies, calmly walking them through the story and pretending that he didn't notice that they were shooting death rays out of their eyes. 
Ellen Nakashima worked her sources and found scoopy details that filled a lot of holes in the documents. Carol Linick got the first interview in the history of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court with the chief judge, and then she got the second one. Uh, without Stephen Rich, I'd still be in a Heisenberg state of uncertainty over <laughs> quantum computing. <laughs> Ashkan Sultani, a top security and privacy researcher, agreed to join us at the Post to help decipher the most challenging technical documents. And some of the stories that I think we're proudest of here were out of our reach until it came. Jason Eukman, Peter Finn, and the copy editors worked their magic. It turns out, maybe you knew this, but that, that NSA and NASA, two totally different agencies. <laughs> <laughs> Ann Kornblut was the day-to-day -day operational leader of this story, juggling a lot of people and a lot of hard questions. She kept me together when I was exhausted and at my wit's end. Uh, she told me when to tear up a draft and when to keep going. She's an old friend, and I can't say how much I admire her. I'm pretty sure you know how lucky you are to have Marty Barron as your leader. Uh, on just this one story, he had half a dozen very hard decisions to make, and dozens of important judgment calls along the way. He showed guts and grace and humor under pressure in the very highest traditions of the Washington Post. Marty gave an interview recently to El Mundo was quoted as optimista sobre el futuro del periodismo. Uh, the energy I've seen in this newsroom since I've been back gives me complete confidence that his optimism is justified. Now, I have an encrypted message for you. Hang on. Got it right here. This is what a PGP encrypted message looks like. Came to me anonymously. And uh, I decrypted it. It said, the Washington Post, if you don't get it, you don't get it. <laughs> Thank you sincerely for welcoming me back to the newsroom after my short hiatus. Uh, and Marty stole my kicker. It really did feel like coming home. <laughs>